been reading this book about the Minerva schools. Um, I think it's called Building the Intentional University. Mm -hmm. And so we met a couple people from Minerva, Minerva right? Super motivated, really successful. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, they, they totally praised the school. They're, you know, among the first people to go through it. Yes. Um, and they were totally into it. And so I, because I knew a little about it through them and I'd heard about it before, um, then I've started to read this book. And so the Minerva School, it's called the Minerva Schools, I guess, but yeah, it's- Minerva um, Schools. Yeah, it's, yeah. Um, but it's, we can think of it as a university. It's a new type of university that has been set up, which doesn't have a campus, right? No. They mm -hmm. like move from one city to mm -hmm. another around the world. Mm -hmm. A lot of the stuff, a lot of the communications are done online through this platform that they have. Mm. But they have really sort of rethought education. Mm. And um, they've done this out of a critique of the American the, educa higher educational the, the system. existing um, education. Yeah. Or, yeah, higher education. In, in and America. in reading their critique mm -hmm. um, of it in this book, I have to say it is spot on. I just, I, I'm really... Um, not shocked, but impressed at how, how right on the spot they, they are. Because we can relate to so many yeah. things. Yeah. So for instance, um, you know, essentially what they're doing is they're, they're trying to teach less critical thinking, okay? okay? Mm -hmm. And so, but basically that's a concept that everyone thinks they're doing, they're doing right? Mm -hmm. And you know, the humanities are kind of in decline in the US and Every time, not just in the U.S. Well, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, right. Yeah. But every time mm -hmm. you know something about that comes up, I hear colleagues either at my university or at other places kind of have this reaction and say, "But you know, the humanities are important. We teach critical thinking. Mm -hmm. In actuality, we don't teach critical thinking. We teach our own subjects. I teach Vietnamese history. I teach modern Southeast Asian history." If somewhere along the line someone develops some kind of skills that help them think critically, which perhaps they do to some extent, then that's what happens. But at the core of what we do, we are not teaching critical thinking. It's a byproduct of what we do at best. And there was an article we read recently, right? Remember that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't remember what it was called. Um, but that person made that very point mm -hmm. and basically said, when your claim to success is a byproduct of what you do, then you are not succeeding at what you do, you know? Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, I mean, I have a couple of um, questions and points to make, but maybe not now. Okay, let's please. go keep going. So, okay. so basically what Minerva has done is they realize that um, American universities are teaching content. They're not teaching these kind of intellectual skills. And so what they've done is to um, take something like critical thinking and then really think about it and say, okay, wait a second, this isn't just a thing. There are all of these different aspects of how people think critically. They break it down. And then from that, those very kind of basic, let's say intellectual skills, they then devise a curriculum up from that. Mm. So it seems like uh, they are referring to something called science of learning. This is the science of learning, yeah. Okay. And there's like yeah. decades of research mm -hmm. of this. You must mm -hmm. know more of this about this than me, yeah, but mm -hmm. right, yeah. yeah. But there's one aspect of it that I found is quite weak, and it directly relates to what I do, and that's area studies. So um, Minerva is doing this incredible job of developing, you know, a kind of creative, or sorry, uh, yeah, well, um, innovative. innovative, creative, and critical thinking. And they're also, one of their goals is to create a global perspective or, or inculcate in people a global perspective. And their way they're doing that is by, as you know, in this book, there's very little information on this, but the little that's there says, indicates that the main way of doing this is by having a diverse student body from around the world and by moving students to different cities around the world. Mm. And as someone who has spent the past 20 years, or like, I don't know how many years, basically since university studying Russian, Chinese, Vietnamese, Khmer, Thai, Sanskrit, Japanese, living in all of these places, I can tell you that does not create a global perspective. What it, basically what it does is, what we have today is a global world where 
you know, innovative people can live in major cities anywhere in the world, get by using English, never have to really learn anything about the places they're in and can do fine. And that that global perspective you can you can get to, but not, you know, one beyond that. Would you have a reaction? Uh, no, because I, I'm just laughing at mm. what he say that this day a global perspective and as long as you are innovative and you know English and then you Well you, you don't have to be innovative, but yeah. Okay, so that's that's why I'm laughing. Okay, yeah. I mean basically you can, you know, live I mean yeah, at this point, you know, I could be someone who doesn't know any language other than English. I can move to Thailand and teach online American history in some online university in America, never learn a word of Thai, be totally fine. And does that mean I have a, a global perspective okay. on things? You know, But or, hang mm -hmm. in there. So the point is that by promoting to the whole world that when you are enabling students to travel, mm. then that would automatically uh, result in obtaining a global perspective. I think that needs to be grounded rather than yeah. claim I mean, or taken for granted. Well, there's a global right? perspective in the sense that you're opening people's minds to the fact that you can move anywhere in the world okay. if you have professional expertise and English language skills. You can, the world is, you can go anywhere at this point. But that but is very limited. It's a very superficial, superficial. global perspective. Yeah. And it's definitely one that doesn't build on the decades of work in area studies. Yeah. But for that, the more I think about it, the more I blame the field of area studies for not being in a place now mm. where a, a university like Minerva can see the importance mm. of mm. something else. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I've, I've been thinking about this a lot and what I've come to conclude is that something we never really think about or talk about, area studies is the product of basically one generation. In mm -hmm. America, yeah. it's the baby boomer generation. Mm -hmm. So my field is Southeast Asian studies or history. And whenever you read a uh, history of Southeast Asian studies, it always says this started in around World War II, it's this kind of, you know, strategic um, enterprise that began that way. But then they stop talking about it as something, you know, mm, governmental okay. and strategic. And mm. then it talks about how, you know, anthropologists did this and historians did this. And so essentially what people don't say outright is that a strategic enterprise was appropriated by a generation who then used it for a different purpose. And this generation had very different politics from, you know, okay. the people before them. And, and after them. Yeah. And the people in the world who are of a younger generation today, right, mm -hmm. in the global age, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I was deeply influenced by these people and their politics as I was came after and grew up in a world where they were teaching mm -hmm. people like me. Mm -hmm. And essentially, you know, what area studies was for people like that, reflected what a lot of their own experiences. I, I have this way of looking at it. It was basically as if you're trying to explain to someone in a cornfield in Iowa who had never heard of Asia before that, hey, there's this other part of the world. <laughs> it's also important. It's great. You know, special. there's much more than America and Europe. So, you, hey, why don't you learn about that place? And so it's a very positive um, you know, take on things and, appreciation. and it also emerged in the kind of the era of the Vietnam War where there's all this kind of self-criticism. So I grew up constantly hearing how we Americans are so stupid. We don't know anything about the rest of the world. We don't learn languages. And we just make all of these mistakes because we just don't know anything. I all right? think those claims are still pretty much accurate. Uh, but not <laughs> no. if you're in the world of area studies. <laughs> okay. So yeah. that's the problem. So mm -hmm. from my perspective, I would say that, you know, the knowledge of people like in my field is the best in the world. This, you have the most... You mean specific specialized knowledge? Oh, but I think the knowledge of like historians of, you know, basically all kinds of things, China, Japan, mm -hmm. It's totally cutting edge in all of, uh, you know, mm -hmm. the world that area studies came up in, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so we can't say that people are ignorant about the world. They are totally intelligent about the world, you know? Okay. Um, but the politics of this field is still that we are trying to 
sort of discover help people see this positive side of the world that they're unaware of mm. and you know in the 1990s area studies kind of had this came under attack as cultural studies critiqued it criticized it for being complicit in imperialism and all this mm -hmm. and there was this backlash which of course there was a backlash because this is the baby boomer you know sort of enterprise they're all against that and they're going no but what i think is really happening there is that you have the beginning of this sort of shift where people are going what we're saying just doesn't really make sense anymore and the cultural studies people wanted to be critical of things mm -hmm. the area studies people are not critical of things okay and i think by not seeing that um, the area studies world lost an important moment and it's been in decline ever since so i th i don't think the cultural studies way of just of deconstructing everything and critiquing everything is the way to go however Critiquing knowledge is production is something that's very important. Mm, mm. And the one thing that in general area studies hasn't done has been to critique the knowledge of the places that they study about. So mm. we study about Asia. We write about it in America. Whatever people in Asia say about themselves, that's none of our business. We leave them to do that. Okay. There's, of course, there are some exceptions. There are people yeah. who have written about, you know, Chinese textbooks of, and then thing in Japanese textbooks. Okay, but in general, our purpose, or we haven't seen our purpose as deacon, as sort of challenging the claims that Vietnamese, Thai, you know, all these other people make. I mean, yes, to some extent we have, but this, you know, in our classrooms, that's not really what we do. Mm. Okay. That, yeah, yeah. But I, that would fit perfectly with what Minerva is doing. You know. If we um, challenge, you know, kind of looked at how is area studies knowledge produced and looking at the claims that, say, people in North America have made, looking at the claims that people in Asia make about themselves and thinking about that by using those critical um, thinking skills to deconstruct all of that, uh, that would then lead to a kind of global perspective, perspective. that would really take things forward. Because mm -hmm. putting a bunch of 20-year-olds together from different parts of the world, you're not getting a global perspective because those 20-year-olds themselves have not been exposed to the kinds of ideas that people in the world of area studies mm -hmm. have, you know, have come to understand. Mm -hmm. But because people in area studies don't really emphasize that and and teach that and really make that central to what they do, then of course people like that don't, haven't been exposed to things like that, you know? Mm -hmm. But in this global moment where you have more and more people who know English, where there's more stuff happening like that, it's a perfect moment for all of those things to come together, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So actually they don't have to be mutual, they're, you know, mutually exclusive, yeah. but they actually can mm -hmm. be That's so what I was thinking, together. like, you know, that's what I do on, that I'm doing on my blog for like eight years. and. The people I've seen attracted to that blog are young Vietnamese who learn enough English to be able to access it, and also expats who live in Vietnam and who go, man, there's got to be more to the picture than I'm learning here. And then they see, oh gosh, there is more to the picture. This guy is showing all these other sides of things, you know? Mm. But that's not the norm in what we do. You know, the norm is to... What do you mean in what we do in where? In what Area Studies does okay. in places like North America, you know? Okay. Basically, we're not out sort of writing books that are deconstructing the construction of historical knowledge in, in various places. I mean, yeah, in, in Thai studies, they do that to some extent. And I mean, there is some stuff... But it's, I think, too... I think you have been doing a lot of that. But I think it's too limited in our own little small worlds that mm. people like the founders of Minerva just doesn't even register with them. And so you don't see the need to kind of make that a central part of what you're doing. You know what I mean? And so global per perspective can then be something really kind of simple and safe of just putting diverse people together and thinking that that's going to lead to something. You know? I think it looks like... Um, people who have been influenced by the science of learning um, pursue a very different path and they probably have different justification for why, for example, and how critical thinking um, can be defined and can be taught. Mm. But if people know enough about the existing literature on critical thinking, for example, and then you can see that actually there are multiple ways to mm. approach 
the concept and up to now there well, has not been a lot of um, consensus yeah. as to what well, it but we, like. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, mean, I started reading this book before you did. They, they're they totally into that. Okay. They've got that. They've totally oh, got sure. that. And so yeah. they break it down. They realize there's all these different aspects of it. Yeah, they're totally on top of okay. that. Yeah. So like, for example, the ethical aspect, the philosophical sure, aspects totally. and yeah. all those kind yeah, of things totally. and technical yeah. aspects. Yeah. And then even now with critical thinking is tied, uh, closely tied to social justice aspect, for example, in, in, in yeah. some disciplines. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, so right. and then educational yeah. aspect right. of that. No, they're on that. Right. So, but a problem problem though that I see is you know so part of their philosophy of, of their school is that there is so much information that's readily available on the internet okay mm -hmm. that what you can do is you teach people these skills and that enables them then to like f you know know how to deal with the information that's out there on the internet <sighs> so the problem with this is that okay you know whatever's in a chemistry course in university is out there on the internet and you can probably get it without too much problem if I send someone to go look on the internet to find out about modern Vietnamese history, oh, they're heading into a minefield, okay? And no critical thinking skills are going to be adequate enough to enable you to go through there without injuring yourself, you know what I mean? Or without making mm. mistakes, you know what I mean? So, so, my... mm, so you need, all, the area study stuff needs to, you know, play a role, but again, when but but like how to play that role and maybe how to even to make your role noticed right and but easy. again so and that hasn't that can't happen when the emphasis is on talking about you know hey isn't japan great hey isn't china cool hey isn't this part of the world you know which is a really it's also ties into the whole kind of academic ego, I'm sorry to say this, where we're always very proud of our topic and we want to show that our topic is special, okay. our people are special, when in reality they're just as messed up as everyone else in the world, including ourselves, And but we don't really talk about them in that way. But, you know, getting to something that really lets us see the, the kind of the oh. world and all of its complexity is something mm -hmm. I think would be so, a lot better. That's Wait a second, we've got to, this, okay, this thing will just restart, I think, okay, yeah. Oh. Okay, so do you need to? No, nah, this thing just restart, there might be a something, don't worry about it, yeah, it'll work, yeah. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. so that's interesting, the last point you just made uh, has a lot to do with a uh, whole body of work on empowerment and mm. critical analysis of the concept of empowerment, yeah. right? Yeah, so I mean, probably that deserve another uh, conversation. Okay, and, yeah. and but then I think we're also <laughs> getting into the problem of baby boomer politics, you know what I mean? So the stuff I'm talking about where like empowerment is all in there and what I'm saying where we should be, essentially should what I'm saying is... Of empowerment, but I think, as I said, there has been a lot of writing. Right, what I'm saying though is we should be as critical of others as we are of ourselves. Yeah. But if we do that, then we're, we'll be accused of imperialism and all these other things, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But if you just let it, things be the way, let others speak for themselves, that's totally naive and that does not create a global perspective, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so to me, the true globalization is when people can truly, you know, fight it out i'm not i don't want to be violent but truly um you know you know read my book yeah you know engage at that level but um instead of just having people get together from around the world and and study natural sciences that does not lead to a global perspective that's um it creates unity among uh, an uber elite in the world and that's important be, because you know and that's uh but um there's something much deeper we can do, I think. But again, I put the blame on area studies for not really... So Minerva has created this thing through innovation. Area studies is in decline because it's not innovating. And there's the only way out is to innovate up into something and make it, you know, really have an importance for, for something like Minerva, which is in, innovating from another direction. <laughs> I think you brought up many, many interesting points, but I would also say that those points are debatable, mm -hmm. right? And so it would be great if you could be a little bit clearer about, you know, so who actually you are criticizing mm -hmm. and what 
you are pretty mm. cool, that would be very helpful. So basically, yeah. the way I look at things mm. is that um, you have, in a changing world, you have two options. You can innovate or be innovated against. Okay? okay yeah. And so what I see something like Minerva doing is innovating against area studies. Okay? Oh, higher education in general. Well, there's that. There's that whole thing. But I'm, yeah. I'm just talking about the area studies okay. saying, oh, they're innovating. It's all of it. Yeah. But, mm. but I mean, there's still lots of higher education that they're bringing with them. But area studies doesn't seem to be going along. Okay. So, but they're doing that for a very intellectual reason and one that's based on, again, learning science, as you said. Mm. So another thing that I see happening is like in the job market, mm. um, you know, in the nineties, there were all of these universities in the U S who were adding Asia positions, Chinese history, Japanese history. Okay. A lot of the jobs that I see now are, and, and many of those jobs were, okay, you have to teach the, um, world history survey, but we want someone who's an expert and all these, you know, who can teach Asia surveys and in the higher mm-hmm. things as well. There's a surprising number of jobs now that I see that are teaching positions where essentially they want you to teach, say, three world history courses a semester. Mm-hmm. And then, okay, if there's one other thing mm-hmm. you can okay. teach, you can do that as, as well. the okay? group thing that you talk about the other day. The like that as well. Yeah. Okay. And, and, you know, and so, um, but that is not being done for an intellectual reason. Okay. Mm-hmm. That is being done for a practical reason that interest in that, like the number of majors in history and Asian studies and things like that is declining. Mm. And these uh, fields are turning into kind of service fields Mm -hmm. where you're serving people in STEM and things like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so places like Minerva are on the other side, they're looking and going, Hmm, people aren't really interested in that stuff. Well, we'll, we'll just kind of spin it this way and, and, and present it this way. Okay. So regardless of whether you're, you're doing it for intellectual reasons or for practical reasons, Area studies is disappearing from the curriculums mm. of, of universities on both sides, okay? Mm. And I can't criticize the teaching college for not wanting upper division courses in Asian history if there's not interest. I can't criticize Minerva for not including core area studies, you know, mm. stuff if they don't see an intellectual reason for it. Mm. I criticize area studies for not transforming itself in the global age to really position itself in a way that it's that people can't ignore it and that it has to be central to what it means to be a global citizen in the global Mm. age Mm. and so yeah so that's what i'm criticizing okay so um could you give me some specific examples as how to move forward no no i just criticize things i don't have positive no (laughs) No, no, come on wait we gotta stop this video now hold on uh no like i mean like i said i think um, like what you have been doing with your work with your not just blog but videos and the well there's all that i mean vlogs that's one way to do things Mm -hmm. is to connect it with media with digital humanities and all of that and just make that central so Mm -hmm. you know i just had a student come in the other day who was an it major wanted to switch to history and he's like which one should i choose and i said do both what are you (laughs) thinking about and i told him have you heard of digital humanities he said no have you heard of gis no have you heard of like do you know like gaming he's like yeah have you ever thought of you know historical games well oh really just that stuff made, you know, and then so I got this kid all excited and then he's like, well, how do I do this? And I went, um, well, you basically are going to have to do that yourself because there's nothing in any curriculum anywhere that integrates all of this. Mm-hmm. But that totally should be there at okay, this point. So, okay? there so there's one. Okay, there's one yeah, thing right, about it. Right. right. But uh, also mm-hmm. at a more intellectual level, I think. Um, the, the, the examination of knowledge production and I've been using the word critique, but I just don't, I don't mean do like we have to criticize, criticize. everything all the time okay. and we're not trying to overthrow yeah. governments and we're not trying to protest something, but we're just trying to establish that, you know, certain information is valid and certain information is not valid. Okay. And so an example, you know, one of the core ideas in the field of Southeast Asian studies is that people in Southeast Asia localize foreign influence, okay? So that's the type of thing that I think a school like Minerva could just totally, you know, go to town on, right? Okay, so here's like a universal claim. And what they would do, I think, is examine how do people make universal claims and what's the evidence that it's based on and how do we 
you know, so if you're claiming that Southeast Asia is a place where people localize foreign influence, then that should mean that there are places that don't localize foreign influences. What are those places? They don't exist. We have a problem with this claim. And so, you know, mm -hmm. Doing that kind of stuff, not only with the information that we have created in the in like North America about Southeast Asia, but with the information that people in Southeast Asia create yeah. about themselves will lead to a more sophisticated understanding. And yeah, and like I said, this doesn't have to go to the level of like social activism and critiquing this and doing all that. It's just establishing some basis for shared knowledge about the world that we live in, you know? And that's what I think can't happen when 20-year-olds come together who haven't had that experience of, uh, in their own upbringing of, of questioning their own history, you know what I mean? I don't think I could have done that, you know, when I was 20 years old, you know? And so you need something that pushes them, that guides them, that directs them in that direction, you know? I certainly would have needed that when I'm 20 years old, you know? So you think um, being taught specifically and um, in a very kind of practical uh, way about critical thinking is essential? Practical That's learning is like the key word of, of Minerva, yeah, they have this okay. whole thing about it. Yeah, yeah, exactly right, yeah. Mm. But again, like I said, that's something that has largely gone against, goes against the politics of area studies as it has existed for the past half century, you know? It's been about telling positive stories about these other parts of the world to balance our own sort of egocentrism about America and the West, you know? And mm -hmm. to say, hey, they're just as good as us. Um, where I think we should turn that and say, you know what, they're just as messed up as us. And we've, you know, it's, we have an equal right to see how they have problems as we do to examine our own self um, for the problems that we have. I, I think I, as you are making mm -hmm. these points, I can see a quite clear dichotomy between us and them. Mm. So I don't know, I like, to st I like to be critical of that dichotomy. Mm. Well, then criticize area studies because basically, you know, um, you know, much of what has been produced has been produced, you know, so. Um, so are you a good product of that? <laughs> no, I'm just what, joking. What we produce, we do by, well, it depends on field to field, but in, in, in several fields, the knowledge we produce we do without making reference to the scholarship of people in the country that, you know, so if you're in Vietnamese history, you produce Vietnamese history without making reference to the studies that Vietnamese historians make, you know, and that is something that you find in other places. So there's definitely been an us and them. And a large a lot of that has been for intellectual reasons, because you we can see that there are claims that people make in their scholarship that we understand are not valid. And so, you know, so we just kind of, we let them do that, we leave them alone, we create our own scholarship. But I think in the global age, the whole thing is about bringing that together. And when you do that, you have to point out, sorry guys, that claim you're making about the Vietnamese being flexible or practical, that does not make any sense, you know? Because again, that's one of those things that assumes that there are people who are not flexible or who are not practical. Well, how do we sh prove that? How do we show that, you know what I mean? And so those are the type of things that you have to, that I think in a global age, we need to really kind of pull apart, you know? <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm just laughing mm. because as I'm hearing what you say, I'm thinking about claims made by French people. Wow, they're romantic. They're yeah, great all lovers. Of this, all of this stuff needs okay. to be, you know, you know, right. And I think that's why I said this sort of way, like the Minerva way would be a perfect way of going at it. If you have these sort of, use these kind of intellectual skills to, you know, um, to deconstruct them. But um, with a case of foreign cultures, it takes, it takes more than just going on the internet and finding something written in English about something. You know what I mean? It's, there's a lot more that goes into it. And so there is this need for that kind of area studies knowledge, but that area studies knowledge has to do more than just present its content to, you know, its audience, which is the Minerva critique of things is that, you know, essentially in like U.S. universities, we present content to our students and then we kind of leave it up to them 
to develop critical thinking or figure out what to do with that. You know? Freedom to understand, right? It's there more, shouldn't I be think, any imposition on someone's of, understanding, yeah, right? And so, yeah, it just because <laughs> it would take a whole lot of work to rethink everything that we do and a lot of ped pedagogical work that a lot of people don't want to invest. And in. yeah, I totally get it. It's, it's, it's massive, which is, you know, the one way that they're able to do it is just to start from scratch and just build everything from the bottom. And so, you know, what we'd have to do at this point is how do you transform something? And, and that's what I think, you know, has to happen. So uh, that's way too much. You know, you have something? No, no, no. I, I, it's just interesting because um, from the war I am operating, I've seen examples of excellent work, excellent pedagogical yeah, approaches. Of yeah, so it's just interesting. But that, one know, example yeah. doesn't define a field, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, and that's, and when people are innovating or trying to figure out what to do, they base it on the larger trends that they see. They don't base it on what one, you know, person is doing, you know? And so there can, there's some great stuff in area studies. There's some, there's stuff that can totally do what I'm talking about. But if you're someone like, I'm guessing, you know, Minerva, you look out, what's happening in area studies? Uh, I don't really see how this fits, you know, and global studies, okay, that then, then they, you can see how that fits, you know, and so, uh, yeah, that's it. So it's up to us to get out there, you know. So again, it's up to us to get yes, out there. The same as it's up to students to understand the information given to them. Yeah, but it can't yeah, be no. done when you requires expertise to guide them, you know, that's mm -hmm. the thing, yeah, okay. Woo. It's hot, let's move on. Mm -hmm.